Professor Dave here. Let's talk about recrystallization. He knows a lot about the science stuff. Professor Dave explains. After learning a variety of separation techniques, we will need to look at just one technique for the purification of solids. Sometimes a chemical reaction will occur such that a solid precipitate will form, which we can then filter out of solution. But it is inevitable that this solid will contain impurities. When the lattice structure is forming during the precipitation, ions and other particles that do not belong in the lattice will get trapped inside and disrupt the pattern of the lattice. There is a solution to this problem, and it is called recrystallization. So let's see how that works now. Let's say we have our impure solid that we wish to recrystallize. The way this works is that we will choose a very particular solvent in which to dissolve this solid. The solid must have a very low solubility in this solvent at room temperature, but a very high solubility in this solvent at very high temperatures, which makes sense given that solubilities will tend to increase as temperature increases, given the entropic favorability of dissolution. So we will choose a solvent carefully and we will heat it up to boiling or near boiling. This will then be added to the impure solid, which has been placed in a beaker. We add more solvent, heating and stirring the contents of the beaker as necessary until all of the solid is dissolved, being sure to add only as much as is necessary for dissolution to occur. At this point, the impurities which were locked in the lattice are liberated and can now float around in solution. Once dissolution is complete, we can then begin the cooling process. This will be done by first removing any heat source and allowing the beaker to come down to room temperature. Then the beaker can be placed in an ice bath, whereby the cooler surroundings will draw heat away from the contents of the beaker. Crystals should begin to form in the beaker, which will be a much purer version of the solid, with the impurities having been removed, and which now are extremely dilute in solution. If crystal formation is slow or difficult to initiate, we can use a seed crystal, whereby we add a little bit of the solid that is supposed to form, which provides a surface around which ions in solution can coordinate, and this will kickstart the crystallization process. This can also sometimes be done simply by scratching the side of the beaker with a stirring rod, as this will liberate a tiny amount of glass that can also provide seeding behavior. Once crystallization is complete, we can use some filter paper on a Buchner funnel and dump the contents of the beaker onto the filter paper. Utilizing a vacuum, the solvent comes through the funnel and the crystals will sit on top, slowly drying, and after sufficient time, we should have crystals that are nice and dry and pure. We can test their purity by performing melting point analysis and comparing the melting point range to tabulated values for pure compounds. A narrow melting point range very close to the tabulated value indicates a high degree of purity, whereas a wider range or a less accurate range indicates that impurities still persist. So recrystallization is quite a simple technique. It really just consists of dissolving a solid in hot solvent and then allowing things to cool so that it crystallizes again, but this time with very little of the initial impurity within the lattice. The trick is to choose the correct solvent that will allow this to proceed properly, since we need the solid to be relatively insoluble in this solvent at room temperature, yet soluble at higher temperatures. In addition, the ideal situation involves an impurity that is soluble at room temperature so that it remains in solution even when it cools and has no opportunity to precipitate along with the desired product. Or similarly, the impurity could remain insoluble even at the higher temperature so that once the solid dissolves, we can simply remove the solid impurity by filtration. This selection process often simply involves trial and error, prior experience involving solvents of differing polarities, or a prediction made on the basis of tabulated solubility data, if such data exists for the compound that is intended for recrystallization. 
Whatever the case may be, as long as the solid is able to dissolve and then recrystallize, the resulting crystals will certainly be of a higher purity than they were before, as it is inevitable that some proportion of the impurities will not be able to find themselves within the lattice as it reforms. So recrystallization is a powerful technique for the purification of solids. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.